Hey there friends and welcome back to Strange Rebel Gaming, I'm Brianna White and today we're going to be taking a look at a panel that first aired at the first SRG Con in 2020. Now, the second SRG Con, SRG Con 2022, is coming right up on April 22nd, 23rd, and 24th and I am so excited about it. It's really coming up soon and uh, it has me looking back nostalgically at some of the amazing panels we were able to do at the first SRG Con and this is one of them so I had to share it with you all. This panel is the women behind Final Fantasy VII Remake characters featuring Erica Lindbeck and Britt Barron, who, if you don't know, I'm sure you know, but if you don't know, Erica Lindbeck is the voice of Jesse in Final Fantasy VII Remake and Britt Barron is the voice of Tifa in Final Fantasy VII Remake. This is a panel I can't actually believe I got to do. I so intensely adore and respect these women and they are just beautiful, wonderful people. I can't believe I get to call them my castmates and my friends. So I hope you all enjoy this panel as much as I did. Now, SRGCon 2022 is coming up. Like I said, if you want some more information about how to join, because reveal at this very moment, there will be another Final Fantasy VII Remake related panel that you don't want to miss. Click the link in the description below to find out how you can join us. And now, let's get on to that panel video. It's not a gameplay video, I always say gameplay, but let's get on to the panel. Enjoy. This is the women behind Final Fantasy VII Remake characters, and I have two very special, amazing guests with me today that I am so excited are here. Thank you for being here. Oh my gosh, of course. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. This is exciting. <laughs> yes. It's wonderful. The chat is lit up right now, greeting you too. They are so <laughs> excited. I am also very excited to have you here. Uh, introduce yourselves. Britt, would you like to start? Sure. I am Britt Barron. I voice Tifa in Final Fantasy VII Remake. <laughs> and and I, sorry. go ahead. My name is Erica Lindbeck, and I voice Jesse in the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yes, very exciting. We have Tifa and Jesse here, but more excitingly, we have Britt and Erica here. They are amazing voice actresses. They are also amazing just actresses in their own right, <laughs> in my opinion. Because as a voice actor, we've talked about it before, you have to be a good actor. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's the core of it, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we've talked a lot about Final Fantasy VII Remake since it came out in April. And we have done a ton of interviews, it feels like. We've talked a lot about our characters and I wanted to switch gears today. I thought, you know, I've had an incredibly blessed experience to get to know you a little bit more as people and looking at your social media posts and in chatting with you about various things we got the chance to meet at PAX East. I feel very lucky to have gotten to know you and I want to share that joy with everyone else. I want everyone else to be as big of a fan of you as I am, as people, if that's okay. Oh my God, thank you. So <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Great. So, so one of the first questions that I have then is, is exactly about that. Do you ever feel like you get a little bit lost behind your characters? Do you ever feel like, you know, you wish people could get to know you a little bit more instead of your characters? Do you ever feel overshadowed? Yeah. Yes. 100%. Yeah. Th that's been something that I've tried really hard to do with my social media is make it very geared towards just me as opposed to my characters. I, I don't, I don't want me <laughs> as Erica Lindbeck. I don't want people, I want people to like me for me and not just my work. Obviously, of course, that's, that's one of the main reasons people, you know, follow me or, or watch me or whatever, but I really do. I want people to like me for myself and you know yeah because there is a separation there you know I'm mm -hmm. I'm not my characters um I'm sure you guys have experienced that as well um with especially with FF7 you know yeah it, it surprised me a little bit because I had never done anything with a character this loved mm -hmm. and while that's a blessing it very much surprised me that people walk up to me and go hi Aerith yeah it's actually in my Twitch chat, people will, my, my mods will remind people if they call me by my character's name, they'll be like, hey, Erica's not, she's not her character. It's like, this is just Erica. 
The other thing is too, like my actions and my behavior, those are my own. Those are not associated with any company or any, or any character. Yes. It also, that separation also allows me to be more myself because I don't want people to think that my opinions or anything are, are tied to any work that I've done or any company I've worked for. I feel like that, that separation is very important to me as someone who wants to be her authentic self on, on mm-hmm. social media and in public and the public sphere. Definitely. Yeah. I think what I've found, especially with voice acting killer is the confusion and that it's hard to separate. I think in particular, maybe because it's not our actual faces and bodies. So I have gotten a lot of, you know, comments on social media where I'm like, I didn't, I just got cast as Tifa. I didn't like show up at Square Enix and say like, she's the best. And I, I do love her, but sometimes you get these comments like praising or, or, you know, the online fighting. And I'm just like, you know, I'm not this character. That is, that is one thing that I haven't experienced as much with more on-screen stuff that I've done. Um, I think Erica, you do like an amazing job with social media of having your own voice. I struggle. Uh, I struggle with that more. You know like of how I look at your social media and I'm like, wow, she actually goes out into the world and does things. Like she's not on <laughs> social media all the time. So good for you, honestly. I wish it, maybe maybe something between you and me is like the right. <laughs> the well, right way. I'm on it. I just have a really hard time posting. It's very it's hard when you play certain characters and people see you as that and then trying to figure out how do I authentically be myself on social media to a mass audience that's also just like feels like a void in a lot of ways. It's not the same as hanging out with friends where I can be my snarky, funny, opinionated self. It's more of this, I find it hard to, you know, trying to be professional, but also be myself and talk the way I talk to my friends, but also it's, a, I have a hard time with it, honestly. So it's really hard. It's, it's a lot. really strange. It's for me, it's like, I'm not, it's, it's hard. It's a really weird thing when it's a professional profile that you're talking to the masses in a way. I mean, I don't have that oh, yeah. big of a following, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's intimidating. It's scary. I feel like you can say one wrong word and then people like, Oh, blow. it's just hard. It's hard for me. It's yeah. Erica, yeah. did you have an experience with saying the wrong thing that you didn't think was the wrong thing for a hot oh. second? Oh my God. When I made it to the Reddit front page and that got like, terrible to oh my God, I never want to make it to the, yeah, it was horrible. What? Uh, oh, it just, it's, it's honestly, it's not even worth talking about. It's, it's, I just, I made a tweet. It was really innocuous. And a fan of mine reposted it on Reddit because she thought it would be funny. And the um, fan did it with best of intentions yeah, she, as well. Yeah, she did it with the best intentions and then it it blew up and got like internet it. It. Yeah, it it was just it just it just was crappy. And but I realized that I was focusing too much on the negative comments and not the fact that the vast majority of people actually the reason it made it to the Reddit front page was because people really liked it and they thought it was funny. And I was just looking at these you know, these few crappy, like incredibly misogynistic comments, which I thought was really interesting. Um, it was very eye opening. But anyway, it's a it's a good argument to stay off of social media because I never would have seen it if but I isn't was that how it always is. There can be yeah. like 200 oh, yeah. freezing comments oh, and you're like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You look for like the one bad one. And you're like, no, but yeah. it's just it's wild what we do, Human I nature. think, especially on social media. It's Yep. It's crazy. It's like, I'm almost just looking for somebody to point yeah. out the thing I secretly fear about myself oh, or yes. think about myself. Mm-hmm. And you just can so easily ignore the, uh, the 99% of positive yeah. things that yeah. people are saying. Yeah. Honestly, it was a really big lesson to, to me, um, that, that whole situation. And it's funny. I, I, I feel like I am good with social media, but by that same token, I just <clears> knew <throat> like most of my Instagram posts. Like I literally archived, I think all of them since 2013, except for six of them. Like it wasn't because I was getting any hate on them. I just wanted a clean slate. Like I just wanted a wipe. <clears throat> I felt like I needed to just who like start over. Um, I totally get that. And I yeah. think that can be super cleansing. Yeah, it definitely was. Yeah. So one of the next things I want to talk about on that related note, on the related note of cleansing, what, if you could separate yourself from your character a little bit, 
what is the thing about you that's very different from your character that's not at all like your remake character or you can totally pull from any other experiences you've done like Erica you can pull from Futaba or Britt you could pull from um your glow character Justine just what what do you think is is a big separation a really big difference between you and your characters that's hard I think Tifa for me at least is she's like a role I've said this she is like a role model because to me she's a better version of who I am I think I sometimes like my boyfriend will joke that my mouth I just speak before thinking sometimes and if I'm fired up about something I feel like I can run my mouth in a way that I wish I didn't and I think Tifa um is really s- passionate but restrained mm. in a way that I wish I was she's obviously more brave than I am I think there's a lot of differences between every character I play um she's probably a lot more coy maybe mm. I think in certain situations though I can be just as shy as she is um and Justine is like the opposite of me in a lot of ways but but similar like I'm not punk and angsty, but I definitely have gone through that phase and can definitely be like the deadpan in certain situations. That's a funny thing I think about characters and personalities in general. Who I am with my college girlfriends is different than who I am with, you know, my manager or my mom or like you, you are different, not versions, but different people, I think, bring out I think different Uma parts Thurman of your personality. I think really well in her book on acting. It's a person is a whole apple. And when you're acting, you're selecting a slice of the oh, apple boy. to show in, into a single character. So I think what you just described is the slices of apple that you are, but you are a whole that. apple. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And different characters are just like upping different parts of that, you know, or okay. taking down certain elements. Yeah. It, I think it's actually very difficult to describe how you are or aren't because there's a part of you in every in every character that you do. Like, obviously, I am not like Futaba from Persona 5 an agoraphobic, you know, 15 year old Japanese girl. But, <laughs> Are but, you um, sure that's not you? you know, it's crazy, right? But, um, but again, I, uh, I have, I, I am sometimes slightly agoraphobic. I do have a lot of social anxiety. I think that might surprise some people, but I do. I, I, that, and that's what I drew on. I was like, okay, sensory overload, sensory o- overload. Erica Lindbeck has ADHD. How can I translate this into Futaba's experience? Like, how can I make it real? How can I, you know, doing, using whatever method I can, um, with Jesse, Jesse is the best of me. Jesse is the outgoing, funny, goes after what she wants, uh, unabashedly person. I wish I was like that all the time. Unfortunately, I'm not who could um, be yeah, I, honestly. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah. I think, I think Brit, Brit put it very succinctly. She, yeah. Totally agree. Totally agree with absolutely everything that you said. Um, a, a big one for me, for Aerith is I don't, I, I don't think a lot about my mortality. If that <laughs> she, she's a character <laughs> that, that has an ending in the original FF seven and, uh, sorry if that was a spoiler for a 21 year old game at this point. <clears throat> um, but a lot of people associate me with those type of thoughts because of what, <clears throat> Aerith stands for as an iconic character that goes through that. And, and every gamer that played that game went through a grieving experience for her, you know? Mm -hmm. So they associate me with those types of thoughts. And that is what I would love for people to stop doing (laughs) because I haven't dealt with my own mortality a ton as you know, a twenties girl. So could we stop that please? Hey, 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 you know what? (laughs) Hey, me too. Same here with this game. Same here. So <laughs> you get uh, it. Oh, I get it. Believe you me. Who, who boy, it's been tough. <laughs> so that's just a note for, you know, everybody out there. Um, please stop talking about us dying. That'd be great. Love you. Thanks. Um, <laughs> all right. So the next question, I want to shift gears a little bit. Um, my community is called Strange Rebel Gaming. And um, over the time, the definition of what a strange rebel is has changed a little bit and and developed over time. Um, I listened to a podcast one time about what it's like to be a rebel in a good way. And I just adored that so, so much. Um, We like to, as strange rebels, break the status quo, go against the grain, do what's not normal, 
in the search for something a little bit better, a little bit brighter in the world. Uh, so we're rebels, but we're, we're strange in it. We're strange rebels. We're not normal rebels, right? We don't just go around wearing like studded chokers and we're like angsty and like mean, right? Oh, well, speak for yourself. I mean, okay, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Everyone loves a good studded choker on Erica. Okay. <laughs> we're going to need that Instagram photo, by the way, like pronto. Okay. <laughs> I'll unarchive it for you. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, so could we talk a little bit about um, what about us? <clears throat> excuse me, what about us goes against the grain? What about us is, is a little bit rebellious, but hopefully in the best sort of way that makes the world a little bit brighter, a little bit happier. Do you want to go? Anything at all? No, Erica, you go, please. I'm, listen, I'm great at talking about myself. What can I <laughs> That's um, why you're here. And, uh, I think uh, it's taken me a really long time to accept how I am as a human being and how I move through the world because I feel like society told me that it wasn't right for a very long time. My parents never did, which was, which was lovely. That's a real um, blessing. Yeah. Which is why I grew up the way that I did. And I was always just unabashedly myself because I never had parents going, Erica, stop, stop trying to be the funny one. You're a lady, be a lady. My parents never did that. And I, and I'm super happy that, that they didn't try to sort of mitigate who I was and, and how I was, you know, growing up. But, um, but yeah, I think I just want people to, to look at me and how I move through the world and go, maybe I can be myself. Like maybe I can let, not let society dictate what I should be. Um, that's really all I want. That can't have been easy though. No. Oh my God. (laughs) I've always felt so weird, but I think, I think everybody does in their way. I really, I really do. I, I'm, 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 this is not to say that I'm, I'm weird. I'm different. I'm not like the other girls. Um, but I just, I've never felt like a stereotypically feminine woman. I just have never felt that way. And I always thought that there was something wrong with me. And now I'm like, no, this is what makes me cool and different. And this is why I can very easily voice, you know, ch- like wisecracking chicks with swords who cut people's heads off. Like, this is literally why. This is why it's so easy for me to slip into those roles because that's who I am. Like, that's where my head lives. And that's okay. That so, is yeah. okay. It's okay. Yeah. And it's a gift to everyone that encounters you that you get to show them authentically who you are because it enables the next person to be authentically who they are. Yeah. I've, I've really been trying recently to not make any decisions based off of fear and, Mm. and to lead by and to try to lead by example. It's really hard for me to step. I don't like conflict. So it's been very difficult for me to step into any kind of leadership role or to even allow myself to say, yeah, you can be a leader, Erica. Like you can, you can set an example and, and it's incumbent on you or at least make it incumbent on you to do that. Um, and that was hard because it's really easy to, you know, it's easy to sign a petition that a hundred million other people are signing. It's hard to, to be on the front yes. lines going, I'm the one fine. I can take it. Yeah. Give, give me what you got. I know I'm doing the right thing. So it takes an incredible level of vulnerability and an incredible level of courage as well. And then on top of that, to do it so publicly, like the three of us have to do. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. I think, uh, I think for me, obviously just, just pursuing this career makes me feel like a rebel in, in a way because it's insane. I mean, I, 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 when I sometimes meet actors that have, I mean, I, I admire the confidence because I don't think I, I was, I was scared. And I think I, I don't know if it's a way that I've always tried to protect myself, but always just like feared the worst. I double majored in college. I was like, listen, you can be a really great actor and it never will pan out just because there's like luck, timing, looks, you know, Um, there's so much that goes into that. And so just pursuing moving to Los Angeles, I'm from the East Coast, my whole family's out on the East Coast. So that alone was like one of the proudest I'm proud of that because that took bravery. Did you get a lot of comments from your family members? My, my parents are always, they were so supportive. They gave me the best advice. I think they were actually the ones that encouraged me to do it when I was young. I mean, they were like, move out to LA, 
it's the farthest away. If it doesn't work out, you can always come home, come back to New York. Like you always have us, but go make the leap now when you don't mind like living with furniture from the sidewalk that you found and brought into your apartment. And, you know, it doesn't matter like making mac and cheese every night for dinner. Like, so that was really encouraging. But um, I think pursuing what I loved regardless of like, there's no safety net as an actor yeah. ever. And it's a roller coaster your whole life. You can be, have a great job for a long time and then it's gone one day. And so mm -hmm. it's scary. And that alone is um, I think, what I'm most proud of probably in terms of like what, right. what I did against the grain instead of just taking a safe job. It takes a lot of courage and you studied mm -hmm. acting, right, Britt? Yeah. I studied yeah. acting. So did you have the same experience with me where a lot of your teachers were like 90% of you aren't going to make it. So get a day job. <laughs> yeah. I think um, all, all three of us, yeah. I'm UC, UCLA, you are right. right. yeah. Mish. So we all have act theater degrees, which is great. Um, yes, I think that that's another thing. I also, I'm from North Carolina and I moved out to LA when I was 18 to, to <gasps> major in theater out here at UCLA, which was terrifying. And actually funnily enough that you mentioned that break, cause I think back on that at the time, it was just what I was doing, but now I'm like, damn Erica. Yeah. <gasps> That was really hard. You didn't know anybody. Like you knew nobody. I also graduated. I don't know. I don't know how you guys, what you guys' experience was like, but I was never the favorite. I was never the mm -hmm. it girl. I was never the person everyone wanted in their play. I was never, not once. So by the time I graduated college, I was like, I'm not very good, uh, but this is what I'm doing now. So I guess I'm just going to work in a coffee shop for the next 10 years. I know, again, I was like, but it is, it's not necessarily about how, how good of an actor you are. It's about uh, perseverance and sometimes luck. So maybe those things will be on my side. <laughs> Little did you know, talent was also on your side, but oh, things we yeah. tell ourselves, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. the through line here that I'm hearing is the bravery to follow your dreams is totally against the grain, totally breaks the status quo. So many people live in fear and follow the safe route or follow the route that someone else told them to take. And the three of us all decided, no, this is what we're doing. This is what we're meant for. We're going to make it work. And hey, we're here because we did. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That just goes to show how important it is to follow your intuition, follow your heart. And if that means you're a rebel, all right. Yeah. And also, and also, if that means that you love having a day job, nine to five, that's also great. Exactly. Yes. That's the other thing. I'm like, envious. I'm yeah, envious. Honestly, I'm like, kidding? oh my yeah. God. That's 401ks. Wow. Yeah. Like, Health insurance. Yeah. Oh, like you just know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, like I learned uh, in college, I think it was, I had this re revelation that I, I was, I, I can't knock other people for not wanting what I want. That doesn't mean that it's a weakness or that it's less than or anything like that. Totally I'm, agree. Yeah. All right. So I love that. That was amazing. Super inspirational. I'm very inspired. Uh, so the next thing I want to ask is I, I very much stalk your social medias. <laughs> I'm very much a fan of both. Oh, of them. no. Oh, <laughs> no. So I wanted to ask some questions about that. That's okay. Uh, Britt, you post so much about puppies. And excuse me, that's like the coolest thing ever. I, saw, <laughs> I, I stalk tell, her dog pictures too. Right? Well, yeah. Your dog is so cute. I can't. Thank you. So She's tell us soulmate. more about that. I can tell you're super, super passionate about um, dogs getting love and getting homes. Tell us more about where that started. Um, I will clarify. I'm obsessed with adopted dogs. Uh, Thank you. Not just dogs in general. I think it started when I adopted my dog two years ago. I, uh, I just didn't know anything. I'm from a suburb in Connecticut where everyone has like a golden doodle or, you know, whatever, a purebred bought dog. So I never, I had never walked into a shelter. I think I knew they, I knew they existed, but I don't think I understood the, what was actually happening until I walked into the rescue where we got our dog wags and walks in West LA, mm. which is an amazing facility. That's the irony of it. And even that to me was like, wait, there's like 
20 dogs here that just don't have homes and live in this. And it's not, that's nothing compared to the city shelters that I, you know, what the things I've learned since adopting my dog, I was terrified of her. She's a pit bull mix. I thought I was embarrassed. I mean, the things I said when we, my boyfriend basically was the one that encouraged us to adopt her. And I was scared of telling people what she was. I, I just had so many misconceptions. I was the problem. And she's been, she's the greatest thing I've ever done. She's the greatest part of my life and she's just changed my life. And so now getting involved in the city shelters, getting involved with Angel City Pitbulls, which is a, you know, rescue in Los Angeles. I've just learned so much about the importance of adopting, the importance of fostering. I mean, dogs are dying. They're literally good, good dogs that are puppy. I mean, I know I'm crazy about this. It's Um, not crazy at all. It's it's just one of those issues, I think, in a world that feels like it's on the brink of collapse. There's so many issues with a ton of nuance and different sides, and it becomes so political. But I always felt like this is one issue that's, it's just not. It's just, it's black and white to me, and it's wrong. It's wrong what what we're doing to animals and that people are buying dogs when healthy, amazing dogs are being killed every day. It's just, it, it, yeah, that's like the one thing I just, it's like my whole life outside of acting. Um, clearly it's the one thing I care about. Yeah. I just think there's a lot of misconceptions and I think I'm passionate about it because I started as a person that believed all of them. And my family has always adopted. We have never really? had, oh, both of my cats. Oh my God. From the streets. Are you kidding? God. Me? Like I've never even fathomed purchasing a dog or a cat. Like I, so, so for me, it's always been like, no, this is just what you do. Like we go get weird dogs from the pound in Greenville, North Carolina. Like that's, yeah. See, that's yeah. awesome. And I think <laughs> even like my friends who I love, are buying purebred dogs. Yeah. And the thing, the thing I think why I'm so passionate about talking about it is because I don't believe that these people are bad mm. or ill-intentioned I or don't care. I think that people just don't know. If you're yeah. not, if you don't fully understand what's happening in the shelters, that these dogs aren't being let out, that the living conditions, mm-hmm. I don't, I think people, these people are my friends, family, you know, people that have bought dogs aren't bad. I genuinely think it's just like out of sight, out of mind. It's similar to eating meat. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. you just don't know the reality of it. So that's why it's important, but that's really amazing, Erica, because I did not grow up in that kind of Uh, Yeah. Every, every year when I go, (laughs) when I go back to Greenville, I go to PetSmart and buy a bunch of stuff and like drop it off at the shelter. Like I, yeah. So that, but, but, but again, the thing is like, I, that's how I grew up and like, that's how I was quote unquote, that was my education was like, we, like that was never even a, it was just like, we go get dogs from the shelter, obviously. Like that's, um, but yeah, that's but awesome. it's interesting to hear your, your perspective on it too. Cause yeah, again, I, I don't think that people have mal intent or any, any, or anything like that. I think you just have to be like, Hey, this is, <laughs> this is what's going on. Uh, this, this is how this, how this works for me. It's so, it's so old hat that it actually confuses me though. I'm like, wait, okay. We clearly grew up in different you know. Situ- yeah, 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 yeah. There's yeah. just so many misconceptions. Even like puppies. Like, well, I wanted a puppy. I'm like, there's so many puppies. There's so, there's many, so puppies. many puppies. I got my like- puppy from the shelter four months. Oh yeah, you can if you if you're willing to wait a little bit, yeah. you can get like a like essentially a golden retriever puppy. You can get anything you want oh, yeah. adopted. You can oh, look. Oh yeah, I know it's out there. I totally I agree, and I love to see how passionate you are about it, Britt. I think that that's just so clear, just from looking at like a single post on social media. I think that's like a little. I, I think social media. This is just kind of a personal thought. Is like, and it can be a little gateway into your heart and what's important to you. And I mm-hmm. think that seeing that is just just really really awesome. Thank. I mean, I think it's also with social media. I have a lot of passions, but I don't feel well educated enough on the issue to sure. speak about it. That's the one thing that I'm like, I'm confident. I've li- I live it. I- I'm confident putting it out there. That, yeah. I mean, social media is hard for me, but that's the one issue I'm like, it's I feel confident everyone. enough. If somebody claps back at me, I-, I am educated enough about this topic to talk about it. Well, and I think that's a, a perfect uh, thought to take to Erica because <laughs> you post a lot about causes that are important to you. You were very loud about them. That's new for me. That's really, yeah, I think, I think the, um, 
the pandemic and the uh, Black Lives Matter movement really made me go, really made me realize a lot of stuff. I realized, it's like that video of Kylie Jenner going, you know, this is the year of realizing things. We're just going to realize stuff. Yeah, I realized <laughs> a lot of things. And, it's um, true though. Oh my God. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. That's accurate. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. Um, I Also, uh, Britt, on that subject, you know, it's funny, like, I don't know everything, of course, about like the, the, the BLM movement to like wax poetic about it but I do know that like money talks. So I was like, great, I'm going to raise money and throw it at black girls code. Perfect. That's what I'm going to do. Like, I'm going to use my platform for that. You know, for those who don't know, she got a portrait commissioned and then sold prints of it. Right. Yeah. I, I, if I hired a black artist to make a print, well, that, well, cause that's what I was, I was like, what can I do? What can I do? Ah, I'm going to make a print and then I'm going to sell it. We raised like $1,700 or something about Congratulations. That's yeah, so it. Yeah. Thank you. It, I mean, it's honestly the, the least I can do. I think I just realized my, my philosophy is very much laissez faire. I'm very, um, I'm very, as long as you're not hurting anyone else, you're fine. Well, you know what? That's not good enough anymore. That's what I realized. That was the real like character arc that I personally went through. And I was like, you can sit here and cry Erica about Elijah McClain or any of these other people. That's not going to help. You can sit, like sit and be sad, but also go do something. So I did something the way that I knew how. And for me, that was going, Hey guys, I hired a black artist to make a star pirate, fantastic artist. Oh my God. That was another thing that really made me upset. I, I realized how the the system is literally created to hold back people of color. Like yeah. I didn't, and, and you know what's insane? That's just a fact. I didn't realize it. I didn't internalize it because I've had such a leg up my entire life. And because I'm a, I don't like conflict, you know, just, just sit back and do your thing and don't bother anyone person it took, it took a lot for me to go, Oh my God, no, Erica, that's not enough. You have to do more than that. You have to actually actively fight back against this system. I remember perusing, I've hired so many different artists to make prints for me in the past. And I was looking at the drawing while black hashtag on Twitter. And I was seeing all of these incredible artists. So many talented people. Why have I never seen these people before? Why? What is going on? Like, why did I have to actively try? Yeah. I shouldn't have to. It's Um, the whole metric ton of issues that need to be addressed one step at a time. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So, so anyway, anyway, I, I can, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know everything, um, you know, the ins and outs that I can wax poetic about the BLM movement, but I know what I can do that is concrete and helpful. So I did that. And again, this goes back to the whole, um, I made a decision that I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to live my life making my choices based on fear, just because I'm scared that someone's not going to like what I have to say. Yeah. Um, because I don't want to interface with those people anyway. So it doesn't yeah. really, it's no loss to me. And living with the courage and, and, and living with that, I'm going to follow my heart and I'm just going to do it. And we're going to follow love instead of fear. That's, that's rebellious too. I think yeah. the choice to follow love that's rebellious in this culture that we live in. You guys are really definitely, it's definitely inspiring. I think the way that you speak on social media, I mean, I, I'm still finding my voice on social media. I think I'm kind of still new to Twitter. I think final fantasy was like the first time I've really, okay. I, I am starting to understand this community and this platform more. Um, and it's a, it's a really versus Instagram, where I think I spent more of my time. Twitter's a really cool outlet to actually get ideas, things you care about out there versus just like a photo and a long, long caption. Um, and I think you both don't let fear dictate you. Uh, and oh, your mind on Twitter and I need to like learning same as you. <laughs> I am very much learning. It's a crazy. Yeah. But it's so powerful. That's what I've realized. Mm-hmm. I think more in quarantine, spending more time on Twitter I think I've now spent more time on Twitter than even Instagram. It's a really positive. It can be a very positive way to can be, can be. Yeah. Can be. Um, Should be. To get out, to talk about what you care about. Yeah. That's actually a a really great jumping off point for the next thing I wanted to ask you Um, besides Twitter, because I think we, we all know that Twitter can be, should be a source of learning a source of, you can scroll through the hashtags of amazing causes 
Are there any other sources of, of learning or inspiration that you have drawn from over the course of your life? Because I know I get a lot of, I get a lot of stuff from podcasts. Like I love listening to podcasts. I love listening to audiobooks. I've been a big reader my whole life. And that's kind of where I've, that's kind of the time that I spend uh, learning about really inspirational people and going, what can I take from this? How can I level up my own, whether it's social media presence or whether it's just like me as a person, as a couch potato, like what are the things that I can do? I get it from podcasts and books. Yeah. I think, I think recently I got back into reading, um, a lot. Like I've been reading a lot of high fantasy, uh, which has been re- really great. Um, I've, I've like anything by Sarah J Mass. I'm obsessed with, um, I read this book series called a court of thorns and roses. And then also I, the throne of glass series, her, her characters are just amazing. And her, her especially her, her female, uh, protagonists are fantastic. There's, there's one named, uh, Aelin and she's just, my whole motto in life is like, what would Aelin do? Oh, she wouldn't Love care. That. She'd just do what she wanted. Great. Like they legitimately kind of changed my life. It's the whole example thing, right? That's why it's so yeah. important to like lead by example because reading that book and going, oh, this is amazing. I want to be like this. There was actually a character in A Court of Thorns and Roses before I, before I read it, my friend Jen recommended them to me. And she was like, there's a character in the books that reminds me of, or reminds um, me of you. Her name is Morrigan and you're kind of my Morrigan, she said to me. And I was like, oh, interesting. Okay. Then I read the books and I read Morrigan and she's a badass, like an absolute (sighs) badass, freaking incredible lady. And I remember texting Jen and going, oh my God, is this how you see me? This is how you see me. And she was like, yeah, you're my Morrigan. And I, and it it like legitimately changed my life. I was like, I was like, I am doing a disservice to everybody around me by not living up to this freaking this thing that people see me as like, it was just such, it was so, it was a game changer for me. It really was. Books are great. My point was. (laughs) How amazing is it that you have a friend that you can rely on to give you that gift though? It's cool, man. That's incredible. Yeah. 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 I mean, I love, I love podcasts. I think that's a really wonderful way to get new ideas and understandings of things in a great context. It's not podcasts are, I mean, the long form podcasts are amazing because you get the tone that people are, are coming across as and the full picture, I think um, more than just like these clips that you, before podcasts, it was just like what TV interviews that were, you know, you have like a minute or two to tell a story. And I love that. I think obviously a great TV show or movie. I just finished normal people. I mean that I need to read. I just got the book too. Um, (laughs) So good. Like when you find something that really speaks to you, that's inspiring. And I think beyond that, leaving LA for me going to, I mean, I was home in Connecticut this, like just being able to see the stars and be in nature and turn off my phone and not just disconnecting and living in the moment in reality. That sounds so like, I don't know, you know, eye rolly, but I think for me, at least I'm like, oh yeah, there's a world outside of just this little bubble that I live in mostly. Um, And that really, especially as an actor and just as a human being, I feel like grounds me. So would you say that that's your self-care? That's been your, your best self-care this year so far? Definitely. And I, I mean, I did take moments of just kind of getting off social media and that, and my phone, cause not just social media, but like, I'm like, Oh, you know, in yep. the internet and yeah. that, and just spending time with family and friends and being outside that really helps me. That's definitely self-care. Any other self-care tips, Erica, what's helped you get through this year? Oh man. Uh, realizing that I don't owe anybody anything. I don't have to respond to every text I get immediately, um, that I'm not, I'm not responsible for how how other people receive me as Mm -hmm. long as I'm a good person. And I'm uh, barring, barring realizing that you maybe need to reevaluate yourself, you know, because everyone hates you and they're calling you an asshole. Uh, Other than that, (laughs) as, as long, as long as you are, you know, a good, a good person, you're not responsible for how other people receive you. I I'm one of those people who's always thinking about, Oh, did I do something wrong? Oh, does this person not like me? Ah, I shouldn't have said that thing. Um, I'm really trying to, um, 
get over that. And social anxiety. It's yes. hard and it's different now because everything is digital for the most yeah. part. And I've so- also gotten back weirdly like streaming is weirdly self-care for me. I don't know why, but that's, I can see that job. about you just it's by not- watching you. It's not my job either. I remind, cause my job, I do voiceover full time. That is my job. And streaming is just a fun thing that I get to do. I used to play a ton of video games and I, and I stopped when I started being in a lot of video games and now I'm back to just playing video games for fun. And that is, that's self-care for me. It's also when I stream, I don't look at my phone. It's like the one period of time where I don't look at my phone. So it's, oh, and baths, baths. Oh yes. I, take I love a bath every day. I love, I love taking baths. That's a lot of baths actually. Yeah. Every day. Wow. Every day. Every day. I love a good bath, but I'm like a, a, a twice a month bather oh. personally. Ooh, get on my level, girl. Apparently, I apparently I had no idea. Wow, I'm really slipping <laughs> up on the bath game. Okay, so I have just adored talking with you. I could talk with you ladies for 800 hours and it would never be enough. Um, so I'm immediately going to send you a Twitter DM and we're just going to continue the conversation <laughs> the three of us. Um, but for now, I think that's all of our time. But before we go, I'd like uh, I'd like some closing thoughts if you have any. Um, and... I would also like you to tell people where they can find you and see your amazing, inspirational, authentic self, whether on social media or anywhere else. You go, Britt. Okay. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) So hard on Zoom. I'm like, I don't want to cut you off. Um, (laughs) What a weird time. I guess just the closing thoughts. I'm so happy that we got to do this and it's really... I really love talking to other women. This was really helpful because sometimes, especially in this time where it's so isolating, you can feel like you're the only one experiencing this. And to hear you guys talk about similar, I'm like, oh yeah, I I will leave any social interaction and just like run through my mind. Like, shouldn't have said that. Well, I wonder if they hate me for doing that. This interview, I'll think that for probably two or three (laughs) days. Like it's social, that anxiety is so real. It's just nice to hear that a lot of other people go through similar feelings. And when we share that, I think it helps at least me find my own confidence and um, feel less alone in this crazy journey that is this industry, that is life, that is quarantine, that, you know, so this is really awesome. And I'm really grateful that you put this together. And you can find me at Britt Barron on Instagram, B-R-I-T-T-B-A-R-O-N and Twitter. Yes. If one day want, Twitch, I don't know. <laughs> if you want to see pictures of Brit's adorable dog, you're gonna have to check out her Instagram. It's it's really not negotiable. Yeah. It's, it's a good Instagram. It's one of my favorites to look at, actually. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, man. All right, Erica, tell us tell us all about you. Closing thoughts. Uh, closing thoughts. I, this was so, this was just like so lovely. It's just, I, I loved you. I loved meeting you guys at PAX. I was so excited to hang out with you guys after I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Everyone was so nice. I can't wait to hang out with these people. And then the pandemic happened. So I'm just really happy to be able to, yeah, it, it was, it's just it not a, there's not a diva in this cast. Like everyone was so nice. Like it's just, it's such a, yeah, it's such a joy to be able to like hang out, hang out with you guys again. And, um, yeah, you can just find me at Erica Lindbeck on Twitch and Instagram and Twitter. Um, yeah. And her Twitch is fabulous. She's been playing a lot of Among Us, which we just played as a community all together last night. And some friendships were broken. Some Dude. betrayals were had. It's yeah. A, yeah. Uh, her Twitch is fabulous. She's been playing a lot of Among Us, but I remember one of her very early streams, she was just arranging dry bouquets and it was like, incredibly charismatic and entertaining so um definitely go go follow her twitch channel thank you ladies so much for this this was absolutely fabulous if you're watching this live thank you so much for being here i hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about these incredibly inspirational and wonderful women and if you're watching this in the vod thank you also for spending time and hanging out here and that brings us to the end of the panel that first aired at the first srg con called the women behind final fantasy 7 remake characters i hope that you learned something about these beautiful wonderful amazing people 
I hope that you are just as big of a fan of them as people as I am. And um, I hope you join us for the next Final Fantasy VII Remake related panel that is coming up at SRGCon 2022. So click the link in the description below to learn how you can join us for that. And we hope to see you there. Please remember to like the video if you enjoyed it, share it with all your friends so they can enjoy it too, and of course, please remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already so that you don't miss the next video. More SRGCon 2020 panels coming up soon. That's all. I love you all. Bye!